All right, so I think I'll just begin. So uh, my name is Desmond. I work for Kyber for, I was an intern at Kyber since January. Uh, I was working on Peace Really. It was a cross-chain solution between Ethereum and Ethereum Classic. And uh, since then I've converted full-time uh, in from the start of July until uh, now. Okay, so the title of my talk is about simplifying decentralized payments. Okay, um, I, I'll probably start the, I'll probably show the demo at the end of my presentation. So maybe uh, we will move forward first. Yeah, so uh, you can uh, find me uh, on Twitter and on Telegram, right? Uh, at anyhow click. Okay, so how many of you have heard of Kyber Network? Can I see your show fans? Okay, okay, not bad. So I think Tiger is doing a pretty great job here since you guys all know about it. Yeah, okay. So um, what we do at Kyber really, um, we took the last few months to really sit together and we had a lot of internal discussions about what we really can do for, for the community, right? I mean, at first we started with associating ourselves with uh, DEX, but then we realized that actually we can enable more, right? So let, let, me, let me explain, right? So what we, after months of discussion, we came down to this uh, statement that we are an on-chain liquidity protocol that allows anyone to easily contribute or access liquidity in a decentralized manner. Now, there are two parts to this, right? There's the contribution and the access, right? For contribution, uh, anybody who wishes to contribute liquidity can do so by becoming a reserve. And reserves compete to offer the best conversion rates. Um, but that's not the focus today. Uh, my focus is on the other portion, which is about access. Right, where we want, I want to explain how you can access uh, Kyber's protocol to meet the needs of your platform or your project. Okay, so we have uh, two main properties of our protocol. Number one, it is decentralized. Um, not fully decentralized yet, uh, we are working towards that. Um, but what it means that this protocol is not owned by anyone. You can just copy like the smart contract code and you can deploy it um, uh, by yourself. Right. And the other thing is that this protocol is permissionless. What do we mean by that is that, uh, once again, anyone can tap onto liquidity and we're working towards opening our reserves where you don't need to do any, um, do, in order to list your tokens, you don't need a legal-based opinion. Right? So we are working hard towards uh, achieving that goal. Okay, so what this protocol enables, right? the key mechanism that this protocol enables is fully on-chain decentralized token swaps. Now, what, this is a very like, basic use case, as you might consider, right? And we have, we can, we have, there, are many, uh, there are many three groups of people that we can categorize uh, to, to, and for people to use this functionality. Number one, we have users, right? For users to do a very simple swap. So, of course, uh, we have KyberSwap, which was developed by our own uh, in-house de uh, developers. Right. And we have also EASwap. So EASwap is a third party project uh, by a few developers in India. Now the next group is wallets, right? So if you are a wallet uh, developer here today, you know you can implement this token swap functionality in your wallet. Right? And you can see examples in IM token and my inter wallet. But today, right, uh, I think this is the most interesting use case that we can offer, and that is for that developers where you can embed token swaps directly into your smart contracts. Right? So, so what, what this means right, is that we enable crucial payment and financial flows that would otherwise be impossible. Now, you might sound that uh, sounds a bit far-fetched, but let me explain. Let us first understand the problem with decentralized flows. Uh, yeah. Okay, right. So let's consider a very simple scenario, right? Consider me, a user, I would like to buy a parcel of land on Decentraland. And this land is actually a land token. It is a non-fungible token. It is a ERC721 standard, right? And I would like to do so using Omisego tokens, right? Now, it is not crazy or unreasonable for me to expect to do this in one step, right? So maybe I can just, you know, submit my OMG tokens and then I receive this land token in return. But what's the reality here? No, it actually requires three steps, right? First of all, I need to convert from OMG to Ether. Second step, from Ether to MANA, because uh, the platform only accepts MANA, their own ERC20 tokens. And finally, I, make, uh, I 
I call like the buy land transaction, right? Where I submit the mana tokens and then I receive the non fungible token returns. Now you see these are three separate steps that would require three separate blockchain transactions and you might have to go to different exchanges. The reason being because only maybe a one exchange supports one token pair and not the other. So you might have to source through different exchanges to, to make the conversions. And what does it mean? For the user, it means there's an additional uncertainty, there is additional risk involved here. Okay, so once again, look at these three steps, right? What do you notice here? Each step is actually a value exchange that involves multiple parties. Or, in, or sorry, let me rephrase, right? Each step is a value exchange where possibly different parties are involved, right? So for the first step, it could be the user and one decentralized exchange. Uh, the second step, maybe he can only find it on a centralized exchange. And then finally, it is the user and the platform itself. Okay, so if we were to let the user perform these three separate blockchain transactions, it is a very painful and poor user experience. Wouldn't you all agree, right? So what can we do, right? Um, we can consider two alternatives. Alternative number one, we use a custodian model or a centralized system, meaning the user deposits his OMG tokens to a custodian, and the, con the custodian helps him to, sorry, yeah? Oh, sorry, yeah. So, so the, the custodian, um, right, let me, right. So, so the custodian uh, buys the land in for him, and then finally the custodian uh, gives, him the, gives the user the land, right? But what does this mean? It defeats the purpose of using blockchain in the first place, right? Because this method requires trust, and we want to do uh, value exchanges in a trustless manner. Okay, so what's the other alternative? You know, maybe we allow the platform to accept other ERC20 tokens. But for platforms like Decentraland, it doesn't make sense. Why? Because they would only want to accept their own tokens. And they would not want to take uh, the volatility of other cryptocurrencies. It, the, and if they do so, it would mean having to juggle between different tokens and maybe even uh, modifying the architecture to, to accommodate this feature, right? So it's also a suboptimal solution, right? But the thing is that this, uh, in, in payment and financial flows, you'll notice that multiple value exchanges are very common. So let's take a look at a few examples. Um, in your handouts, you will also see these, ex uh, these examples and uh, a, a few more examples as well. Okay, so first of all, consider this case, right? The user wants to pay in OMG tokens and he receives a stable coin in return. Uh, yeah, the, the user goes to, for example, say a, a Korean bar, right? He, he purchased a bottle of beer using OMG tokens and the vendor receives DAI or ether in return, right? Uh, the second use case would be user paying OMG tokens for use in, for example, say a decentralized computing platform. Third use case, the user wants to contribute to an index fund and the moment he, with OMG tokens, and the moment he contributes these tokens, the tokens are immediately rebalanced or traded for 10 other different tokens that constitute this portfolio. Finally, the last use case would be, for example, say Gitcoin, right, where they allow token teams to create bounties and, they, and these token teams put up bounties in their own uh, coin, in their own token, and part of the payment, uh, Part of the payment can be um, made by the developer who claims the bounty in his own preferred token, right? But once again, all these use cases require multiple value exchanges, right? So, so the, the key challenge here, or the heart of the matter, is that for payment and financial flows, the problem, the crucial step, often includes combining these multiple value exchanges in a single transaction for the user and developer, right? I, I cannot stress this point enough, right? The moment you break these multiple value exchanges into separate transactions, it, it will totally spoil the user experience and you have to fall back into one of those suboptimal solutions. So now that you have probably understood the why, now the question is how, right? So let's consider uh, these few ideal properties, right? First of all, we have atomic and immediate settlement. We have the ability to combine multiple value exchanges. And finally, we want the ability to interact with other parties. Now, the first uh, property that I'd like to talk about is immediate settlement. Why is it important to have immediate settlement? 
If you see here these three steps, right? Notice that these are a series of value exchanges that cannot be done in parallel. What do I mean? The first step must be completed before you can move on to the second step. And of course, you need the second step to complete before you can move on to the third. But in order for this to be achieved, what do you need? It means that you need liquidity and rates to be available at the time of the execution of the blockchain transaction. And uh, my, one, one of the guys uh, at Kyber told me to uh, point this, make this side note that our rates are competitive and we have this motto in our company, don't trust, verify. So you can go ahead and compare us with other exchanges or either centralized or decentralized to see that uh, our rates are indeed competitive. Okay, so keep that in mind. Let's move on to the other properties, right? So we want multiple value exchanges. We want the ability to interact with other parties and we want atomicity. Right, guess what? Smart contracts allow all this to happen, right? Why? Because number one, smart contracts can collaborate with other smart contracts, right? This means the allows for this interaction. The second of all is atomicity, right? If anything goes wrong during the blockchain transaction, then everything gets reverted. But if you think about it, every blockchain transaction is uh, only, you only achieve atomicity in a single blockchain transactions. You don't get atomicity with multiple. So that is why it's very important to keep everything in a single blockchain transaction. Right. And finally, you are able to wrap these multiple value exchanges, or in other words, embedding token swaps, in a, in a smart contract function. And the user can call this uh, smart contract function, and these multiple value exchanges are executed. But in order for this to happen, what does it mean? If you, the thing is that smart contracts don't just collaborate with smart contracts. Smart contracts can only collaborate with smart contracts. Right? Smart contracts cannot interact with anything that is off-chain, that lives outside the chain. Right? So with this problem, combined with the previous one, where you need liquidity and rates to be available at the time of execution, what does it mean? It means that you need a fully on-chain liquidity and settlement engine. And that is what Kyber is about. This is our uh, core uh, engine, right? We have a fully on-chain liquidity and settlement engine. The moment you have off-chain components, you break the encapsulation or the ability to combine these multiple value exchanges in a single blockchain transaction. And second of all, we have a very transparent rate and reserve model, right? Liquidity is already available. It is promised by reserves who put their, who put their tokens, store their tokens in a smart contract. Right, and they periodically feed their rates on chain. Right? And you are probably getting the best rates available. Right? And the advantage here that I like to point out is that you, you have the potential to get a better rate than you asked for. And in, if, if compared to other exchanges, right, you only can get what you ask for. You can never get what you, you cannot get, uh, you don't have the potential to beat that rate that you are asking for. Right? And finally, we have a simple pricing algorithm. Right. All the algorithm does is iterate through all the reserves and select the reserves that offers the best rate. Now, let's see how this works for the user. Right? It's exactly what he expects. He pays his OMG tokens and he can get his land token, uh, the non-fungible token, immediately. Right? But behind the scenes, right, it is actually one atomic transaction right? because OMG is converted to ETH and then ETH to MANA and finally MANA to land. Right. Uh, we, over here, I'd like to point out that we use ETH as the base pair. So that's why it's converted to Ether first. Right. So let's uh, do a very simple function trace. Right. Over here, you see we have three contracts and we have the user. Right. So over here, we have a wrapper contract. Uh, the reason why you want a wrapper contract is because you want to segregate your transactional logic, or the one that does the pricing, uh, and uh, you want to separate it with your core logic of your deck. Right. And uh, so you have this wrapper co contract, you also have Decentraland's contract, and you have Kyber's uh, contract. So the user calls, for example, this function, it's called like buy land with tokens, right? Now then the wrapper contract will give, it is assumed that the user has given an allowance for this wrapper contract to call the transfer from function, right? So then the wrapper contract will call the trade function of Kyber network proxy. So the OVC Go tokens are transferred to Kyber Network Proxy and then it's given to a reserve. And then the wrapper contract receives mana tokens in return. Right? And then the wrapper contract will call, for example, right, the buy land function of Decentraland, <coughs> where it, it, it uh, transfers the mana tokens to Decentraland and then it receives the land token and then it transfers to the user. 
right? So the, the thing I like to point out here that the user is able to do it in one single function call, right? Of course, you can, excluding the one that he has to uh, call the approve function, right? And you can think of this as uh, this whole uh, mechanism, right? To, to extend it to other payment flows and, for, and uh, other financial flows as well. Okay, so for integration strategies, right? Um, I, it's as simple as incorporating a widget but for the use case that I talked about, you probably want something more complex. Uh, you, you need something more complex like uh, smart contract integration. Okay, so to summarize what I talked about, we have a fully on-chain liquidity and settlement engine that allows for these ideal properties like atomic and immediate settlement, the ability to interact with other parties, and the ability to wrap multiple value exchanges in a single transaction to allow payment and financial flows that were otherwise impossible to be done in a single transaction. Right. And I'd like to point out that we are probably uniquely suitable for that integration because we allow this. And uh, it is our commitment to the community to, to help build and, and to help grow this ecosystem. Okay, uh, so finally, I'd like to run through the demo with you right now. So, yep. so we click on the button. Right. So over here, he's directed to a new tab, but it can be done in the single platform as well. And you can see, uh, this is the, the widget, right? He can choose to pay in KNC. Uh, over here, I already have some KNC, so I would like to purchase this. And you can see that it shows you the estimated value in KNC, right? So let's agree first to the terms and conditions, right? Okay, so next, right? So over here, you have a few options on how you'd like to access your wallet, right? Either MetaMask, uh, Trezor, Ledger, uh, in, uh, in the, uh, getting your private key in, right? So let's uh, use MetaMask. I think it's unlocked already. Uh, yeah, so it shows you once again how much you need to pay. Uh, and this is the gas price. So uh, there's also the gas limit here, right? So let's confirm. And it should open up MetaMask notification. Uh, help, me, wait, help, help me go to the edit, the gas fee here, the edit button, you know, this one, the one on top. Uh, out of it, uh, edit, Ed edit. <laughs> uh, yes, this one. Okay, I uh, maybe we change the gas price to like eight, right? M we want the, the transaction to go through like really fast. Increase the gas price, please. Thank you. Yeah, up, up. Yeah, press it, press it. <laughs> up, up a bit more. Okay lah, can lah. I think, right? Save and confirm. Okay, so now let's uh, wait for this transaction uh, to be min uh, to be mine. Yeah, sorry. Uh, in the meantime, we probably can move on to the presentation. We'll come back to this later. Okay, right. So I'll run through the developer portal overview. Oh, right. I have this. Okay, so um, I like to just point out a few features here if you're a developer very quickly. Uh, number one, we have environments. environments. The environment section is where you can get your uh, contract and token addresses for like the few uh, for all the different environments like Minet, for Robson, Coven, and soon and soon Rinkerby. Yeah, it, it's on the way. Now, second of all, you have, can refer to this guide section where you can see if you want to set up reserve, you can see how you can go about doing so. Of course, you have that integration guide, vendors, and uh, wallets as well. So all have uh, separate uh, integration guides. Right. And finally, you can refer to the uh, API. So you probably would want to take uh, the more important contracts are Kyber Network Proxy, Kyber Reserve, Conversion Rates, Expected, and p -burner. Right. Uh, but the most uh, important contract that anybody who wants to do smart contract integration would be Kyber Network Proxy. Right. So a few relevant information, right? If you can look at our workshop repo, uh, if you want to see a few examples and you want to see how you can deploy it in Truffle for local testing, or you like to do it uh, in your test net, in the public test nets, right? So over here, you can get uh, free uh, ETH and tokens. This is the URL uh, for free ETH. And then you can do it, uh, there's a Robson swap. There's also a Rinkerby swap, um, but that isn't like a publisher. And finally, we have a tracker that allows you to see the price and the volume of the tokens that are being traded. So uh, these are the few uh, trackers, uh, the few URLs. Um, these slides will be made available uh, after the presentation. 
Yeah, so open a new tab. Uh, the URL for the developer portal is developer.kyber.network. DEV. Yeah, this one. Okay, so uh, scroll down. It's under the widget generator guide. Yes. Click on the link. Go the go to developer.kyber.network slash yeah. Here. Okay, so for the really simple use case where you want to allow just a simple swap functionality on your website, or you want to be able to receive ERC20 tokens as payment, no, you have uh, these few configurations. So, yeah. So uh, over here, you, you can con con configure these fields, right? And then you have the, the different parameters. Like this recipient address is where the Ethereum address that you like to receive the payment in. And then, of course, uh, what tokens you like to receive the payment in, the amount. This would be specified, for example, if you're receiving payment for like a physical good, right? And of course, you can a uh, few other parameters that we uh, don't want to talk about, right? So scroll down. Right, and over here you can see the, this is the widget, that this is how it looks like. Uh, you can configure it once again, and you can, uh, you can either co you can copy the source code and paste it into your website. Okay, so uh, this is actually working. If you click on it, it will bring you to the different, uh, uh, it will show you how exactly this behavior of the widget is. Okay, um, can we go back to the, to the transaction that was uh, being mined? I think it should be mined already. Right, so let's check out this transaction. Right, so yay, it's success. Right, so over here you can see all the different uh, token transfers that we're going through. And like I said, uh, we use Ether as the base pair, right? So that's why the reserves will, the, the reserves just uh, state the ETH to token or token to ETH uh, conversion rate, right? So that's why uh, the reserves will receive in Ether or in the KNC. Right. And finally, you can see here the ERC721, the non-fungible token, is being transferred back to the user. Right. So the sample generated code for the widget. And um, finally, I'd like to end off by uh, asking if there are any developers here. You can join us on Kyber Developers Telegram group. If you have any questions, you can ask us there. Or you can ask me directly. So that comes to the end of my presentation. Thank you all.